This week I've got some vibrant, colorful, delicious lunch ideas. These could be work from home lunch ideas or you could definitely put them in containers, take them on the go. As I always say, the main purpose of these recipes, of me sharing these recipes, is to hopefully inspire you to just step into your kitchen, to get comfortable in that space, to create from scratch, even if it's just one or two meals a week, it will make all the difference. For more of my recipes, more ideas, more inspiration, you can check out my eBooks over on my website at www.tishwonders.co.uk. We're gonna jump into this one pan butter bean recipe. We're gonna use green beans courgette. We're just gonna throw everything in one pan. It's so simple. We're gonna pair it with this creamy herby yogurt. I like to top mine with any protein that I have on hand. I think salmon goes really well with this, but obviously adapt that to suit your preference. So if you prefer chicken, that will work. If you'd prefer an extra plant source of protein, that would work also work. For this one pan butter bean lunch idea, we are going to be needing some butter beans. You could use jarred, tinned, you could obviously cook them from dried. Now you can really switch the vegetables up. I just grabbed some green beans and some courgettes from the supermarket because they kind of cook quite quick. So they're easy for like a one pan kind of flash cook type recipe like this. I used some dried oregano, some lemon juice, and then for the yogurt, we're gonna be needing some yogurt of choice. I used some Greek yogurt, and lots of fresh herbs, so some parsley and dill, lemon juice, olive oil, black pepper, sea salt. Just gonna start by finely chopping up all of our ingredients, the ingredients that need chopping. So finely chop the garlic. We're gonna chop the ends of the green beans and we're also gonna chop up the courgettes. In a pan, you can go ahead and heat some olive oil and throw the garlic in, throw the courgettes in, throw the green beans in. Literally, I said this is a one pan and it really is. You can season with some salt, place in some oregano, Gano, some black pepper, throw the butter beans in and a splash of tamari. You can add in a tiny splash of water, like literally like a tablespoon. This is just to ensure that the green beans and the courgettes cook well. On a really low heat, you can let everything cook. Let everything cook for about five minutes or so. Then you can like turn the heat up and just give everything a good mix, but it will cook really quick. Within 10 minutes, it will be done. So once the green beans have softened a little bit and the courgettes are cooked and the garlic is smelling fragrant and everything is just smelling delicious, you will know when it is ready. I love this one pan butter bean dish with some yogurt of some sort. So I just chopped up some fresh herbs that I had on hand, so some parsley and some dill. I placed my Greek yogurt into a bowl, placed in all of those fresh herbs, some sea salt, some black pepper, gave it a swirl of olive oil, a squeeze of lemon juice, and just mixed everything. So serving up this lunch idea, I placed on the yogurt with those butter beans, which were just warm and delicious. Like I said, you can prep this in advance. This will still be great for an on-the-go option. So I required a little bit more protein, something to just keep me going, something to really fuel me throughout the day. So I just grabbed this shop-bought poached salmon, placed it on top and everything combined, the butter beans, the creamy yogurt, the salmon, absolute perfection. This is a great example of keeping food really simple, super tasty, super filling, super nourishing, nutritious, everything all in one. I've definitely been taking it very slow this January, just easing myself into 2023. As much as it is humanly possible, I just don't participate in any new year pressure, meaning I'm not racing to be anywhere other than where I'm at at this present moment. In my personal opinion, more valuable than making unrealistic changes like cutting out all carbs. We wanna think about long-term sustainable practices that we can implement and do consistently over time that make for a better quality of life. You already know my love for the Sensate device and how it has transformed my meditation practice, helping me to fully enter into a relaxed state. The Sensate device is an infrared resonance device that when paired with the sessions in the Sensate companion app works towards reducing stress. For me personally, the Sensate has improved every aspect of my life. I am here to remind you that it's okay to start the new year off with simplicity, with focusing on the very basics in life. And when I say basics, I mean the basic things like 
Are we breathing correctly? Are we even aware of the tension that we're holding in our bodies? Do we just need to just relax <laughs> for a second? The Sensei device emits infrasonic sound waves that are synchronized with the app's soundscapes to provide deep relaxation in 10 to 30 minute sessions. I think collectively at the beginning of the year, there's a lot of anxiety brewing. There's this need to jump in head first and just tick everything off our list. This is all good and well, but I think it's imperative for us to think of our overall well-being when gliding through the year to ensure that we don't experience mental, physical, emotional burnout. If the Sensate sounds like something of interest and you'd maybe like to explore it a little bit more, find out some more information, you can head over to the Sensate website at getsensate.com forward slash Tish and you can use the code Tish at checkout to receive £30 off. This next recipe is one of my favorite things that I have made recently. It's so simple. It came about by me just playing, putting ingredients together in the kitchen. I had some butternut squash and then I thought that would go really well with like roasted chestnuts, roasted butternut squash, roasted chestnuts, throw some red onion in there for some extra sweetness. And then I paired it with some orzo, some lentils, threw some feta. I have no doubt that you are going to love this one. We are going to be needing, of course, some orzo. That's like the main ingredient obviously you can use an alternative type of pasta you don't have to use wheat pasta or you could use any kind of grain you could use quinoa you could use brown rice we're going to need some lentils so puy lentils or beluga lentils would work well i'm going to throw some shop bought jarred roasted red peppers into this salad i love the vibrancy and the flavor of roasted red peppers and buying them jarred just means i cut a lot of corners it just makes things a lot easier so we're going to be using some butternut squash if you don't have any squash but you've got sweet potato that would also be really really yummy i think it would work along with the butternut squash we're going to roast up some red onions just for that extra edge and for the start of this recipe we're going to be needing some cooked chestnuts you can find pre-cooked chestnuts in most supermarkets within the UK, especially this time of year. And if it's an ingredient that's just not accessible to you, it's difficult to get hold of, you can get creative, maybe add some walnuts in place, maybe toast some pumpkin seeds, that would be really good as well. I think adding feta to this recipe just tops it off. It just makes it that little bit more special. You could use a vegan feta or if you just prefer without feta. Again, it will work, trust me. We're gonna need a good squeeze of lemon juice. We're gonna be using lots and lots of extra virgin olive oil in this recipe so we're going to start by peeling and chopping our butternut squash so i just start by peeling it. i think this is the easiest way to prepare it just peel it chop it in half i just used the lower end of the butternut squash so i used about half of it place the cubes onto a lined baking tray and go ahead and just season with sea salt black pepper you can get really creative with the seasonings i'm keeping things super simple this week because i just want to show you how effective simplicity is but of course go ahead add some cumin seeds add some herbs add some extra spices if you want to so place your baking tray into a preheated oven of about 200 degrees celsius and leave it in there for about 20 minutes so we're going to chop up the red onion i like to keep the red onion quite chunky and we're also going to chop up our cooked chestnuts so after about 20 minutes you'll see the squash would have started to cook we're going to throw on the red onions and the chestnuts we're just going to make sure everything's coated in the olive oil we're going to place the baking tray back into the oven and we're going to leave it for another 10 minutes or so we're going to chop up the remaining ingredients so the fresh herbs i had some fresh parsley fresh coriander for sure works really well in this recipe dill would work well then i chopped up the jarred peppers obviously if you're roasting them from scratch you can roast them and chop them up they don't have to be jarred red peppers so i followed on by cooking up my orzo so just cook it like normal pasta some people like to toast it beforehand with a little bit of butter or olive oil this for me is just the quickest easiest way is just cook it like pasta because it is pasta you can rinse it under some water just so everything doesn't kind of like stick together and then remove that roasted squash oh my goodness the chestnuts once they come out of the oven the chestnuts will just have this slight golden tint to them and the texture would have just slightly have changed i love them when they're not roasted but oh my god when they're roasted amazing the red onions will just add a sweet layer to this recipe so in a large bowl place in your cooked orzo your cooked lentils tools everything from the baking sheet so the butternut squash the chestnuts and the red onion place in the roasted red peppers the parsley a good squeeze of lemon juice some black pepper and a drizzle of olive oil if you want to i didn't add extra because i roasted the vegetables in plenty of olive oil 
Give everything a mix and once everything is combined, you can then crumble in some feta if you are using feta. Oh, just honestly, this is heavenly. This salad is delicious. So again, pair this recipe with whatever protein you enjoy, whatever protein feels good to you. I had some chicken breast, so I just cooked that really, really easy. Just kind of pan cooked it and yeah, served my absolutely delicious lunch. This also salad is so perfect for meal prep because it actually gets tastier over time. The different colors, layers, textures honestly just makes lunchtime a delight. It makes me look forward to eating my lunch. I guarantee if you try this recipe once, it will become a regular, like a staple in your kitchen. With this quick blend fridge raid soup, I feel like you can get as creative as you want. There is no set recipe. It's just best to kind of go with the flow. Um, use vegetables that you have. I would say that I kind of like to color coordinate my vegetables. So I'll either make, say like an orange soup or <laughs> a green soup if I'm blending it. There are definitely ways to ramp up the nutrition with this vegetable based soup. You could add things like bone broth, which I'm going to be doing. So red lentils would work very well. I think sometimes working with odds and ends can be really fun. You can really create fantastic meals from what you would have thought was nothing so let's go check the fridge let's go see what I've got here's what I'm using for my kitchen slash fridge raid soup we're going for like an orange themed soup so we'll use the bottom part of the leeks for flavor we'll throw some celery in there I found a swede and a celeriac which they both kind of need using especially this celeriac I always think that celeriac can be a little bit intimidating if you've never cooked with it before but these types of root vegetables honestly just work them like a potato celeriac makes great root mash we've got the basics like onion garlic ginger so the main vegetables are butternut squash I've got some sweet potato and a couple of carrots that I found I found a parsnip which needs using so that will work other things include herbs and spices things that I always have on hand maybe some coconut milk because I've seen some in the fridge I'd say what I've got here will probably make about four servings or so so just like that great when you're not in the mood warm it up um, throw some extra things on top like me I love an egg on my soup sometimes some roasted chickpeas or something like that but yeah you'll see you'll see how I work this let's go make this soup so we're going to start off by chopping up all of our chosen soup ingredients so whatever you're working with so the onions the garlic I like to finely grate my ginger it just gets all of the flavor out I chopped up the leeks like I said the bottom half of the leeks and this is the famous celeriac that I just mentioned the skin might just seem a bit like oh my god what am I supposed to do with this like once you peel it it just looks like a any other root vegetable basically so yeah just chop that up I peeled and chopped the swede along with the sweet potato the carrots the parsnip and lastly the butternut squash do not stress or worry about the presentation of your chopping everything is literally going to be thrown in a pan cooked and blended so it really really doesn't matter so in a heavy based pot heat a little bit of olive oil or whatever fat you're working with and throw in your onions garlic ginger celery and leeks so you can throw in some sea salt i also threw in some spices that i just wanted to use so i threw in a little bit of garam masala and some turmeric then went ahead and literally just threw all of my root vegetables in so the celeriac the swede the carrots parsnip butternut squash sweet potato all of it all of it at once throw it in and I just poured in that bone broth you can pour in whatever stock broth you're working with I seasoned with some black pepper and I threw in some fresh thyme before reducing the heat and covering my pot and literally just letting the soup cook so you'll be able to tell when everything's cooked just eye it you'll know when the vegetables are cooked and once they are if you want you can throw in some coconut milk like I did if you're using cream you could throw some cream in um, yeah, something just to give it like a creamy edge is quite a nice touch. I didn't even pull out my high-speed blender. I literally grabbed my hand blender and just blended everything until smooth. 
When it comes to soup toppings, the possibilities are endless. I love throwing some roasted chickpeas on top, so I cooked some up. I cooked an egg and threw that on top just for some extra protein, which personally makes me feel really, really satiated. When I'm on the go, this is a dream meal for me, especially this time of year. I love having a soup pre-made in my fridge, I throw it in a flask and maybe take like an egg or something in a container. And it's just a great lunch to have on the go, especially when you can have warm food on the go. Yeah. Is. Oh, mm. I'm going to finish off enjoying this beautiful soup. The full written recipes can be found in the description of the video. And remember to head over to the Sensate website if you would like to check out the Sensate device, which I would highly recommend. If you cook any of these recipes, if you're inspired by them and you happen to create something, let me know how it goes. Tag me over on my Instagram. See you all very soon in my next video.